Right then, part three of the concept hub design. There's loads of new stuff, which I'm going to show you. Loads of things have been redesigned. I've added some more stuff and it's all starting to take shape, which is good. So um, as ever, I'll take it apart and then put it back together in front of you. So what you can see in front of you is the full design so far. All right, the bit that's highlighted in yellow at the moment is the hub shell. I've cut it in half for you so you can see what's inside. Right, so in front of you is the axle then. I've done a fair bit of work on this. In the previous video, I showed you the new end, which is here. Um, I've copied that over to the other side now, which is the drive side. Um, also, I've completely renovated the shoulder arrangement on the axle shaft itself. Ignore this little black line in the middle. That's just a modeling thing I'm doing at the moment. This is the only shoulder currently on the axle. I'll explain that in detail later when I reveal the free body. But basically what happens now is this area is the locating bearing and the rest of the bearings in the system are fixed to this point here. Okay. The previous bearing system where there are shoulders here and here is now gone. All right. Next up then is part one of the screw on end cap system of the non drive side and then the floating O ring system, then the bearing preload system. So there are the four bearings in place now. Um, you'll see here that this is the only bearing which is against a shoulder. So this whole area here, as I say, is the locating bearing area. Next up here is the first big change. So this is a screw on part, exactly the same as the non drive side, but this time this screws on all the way up to the edge of the bearing. So the blue thing is part one of the new end cap system on the drive side. That screws right up to the inner race of the bearing here. And then the other side of the bearing you'll see has the shoulder. So this bearing here, this pink one here, is locked into position. And then the other bearings are essentially floating on this smooth shaft. So they are affected by preload here. And then the position of the other elements that hold them in place, which is the hub shell and the free body unit and the extra drive system I've created. Next up, we've got the floating O-ring system again, same as the non-drive side. As before, this thing can move about onto the dropout, okay? And it doesn't affect the bearing here. And that is what we've got so far with the axle arrangement. So just to recap then, we've got the two-part floating end cap system here on the non-drive side the preload system here, the first bearing, the larger hub shell drive side bearing, the free body bearing, the inner free body bearing, which you'll notice has moved away slightly from this larger bearing. I'll explain that later. And then finally, you've got the locating bearing here with this new two-part floating end cap system, which is the same as the non-drive side. So the next thing I did, I was thinking about this floating end cap system. And I thought, well, this is all very good if your dropouts are not straight, but what happens with the skewer? Because the skewer doesn't have a floating end system to it. So if the skewer is clamping something straight, then this system that moves about is kind of sort of half redundant. So I thought, well, if we're going to design a hub from scratch, we might as well make ourselves a bespoke skewer system, which is what I've done. First of all, to make the skewer system, I designed the rod that goes through. Now, this will be an external cam skewer system. Um, I haven't fully modeled this yet. Um, anybody who knows what an external cam skewer system is will understand this little head here, um, but just don't worry about it yet. Next up, we've got the end system. So let's focus on this end system here. This is just a screw on end. I think everybody who's got a skewer has seen this, but if you look here, it's got a concave inner. And then if you look really closely here, it's got a little channel for, you guessed it, an O-ring. So what's going to happen here? Well, if we look at the wireframe model, notice that this is the skewer rod. This part here will be threaded as will the skewer rod. So the, this is where it screws on. But then here it kind of opens out. So it's got a bit of a chamber inside. And then the O-ring is sitting up into this channel, but not touching the rod. This system has two parts just like the floating two-part end cap system on the actual hub itself, this here has a floating system. If we zoom in here, here's the O-ring, here's the main part, and here's the floating part. Now the floating part will move about like this and the O-ring will stop it coming out basically and offer a little bit of cushioning. If we look inside, that is larger than the rod, so there's room to move about. Your dropout will sit in this channel and then whatever angle it's at, this will move 
and then this will move to fit it perfectly. I'll show you on the other end what's going on. So the first part is this floating system again. That's This is exactly the same as the as the other side, okay? The same as this part. Then we have the end piece. Now this end piece is slightly different because it's got to take the lever and it's also got to house the cam system. So um, I haven't fully modeled it yet, but it will look like that. Now to demonstrate how this works, I've made a little fake dropout. Imagine that's your dropout. If it's totally straight, like it is now, when you clamp this part in, this will move in, of course. This part will move in and it will touch this face. And this part will clamp in. This, this part will, of course, move in, all right? Just imagine that's how it works and that will all be clamped together and that'll be lovely but what happens if this is like that because the people who made the frame didn't do the job properly well this first will move like this this will move like this and then the axle is straight this part of the end cap is straight the end of the skewer is straight the rod of the skewer is straight everyone's happy another thing that this can do is if the actual face of the dropout is a bit funny in that it's been machined, you know, a bit thinner at the bottom or a bit thicker at the top. Again, it's not a problem because this will just move in to wherever it is and just sit into position. So whatever's going on with the dropout, you know, whether it's at a funny angle, whether one side of it's not been, you know, machined off perfectly, whether it's a bit thinner at the bottom or thick at the top or whatever, this system will deal with it. Of course, that's the same for the drive side and the non-drive side. I've also started to have a major rework of the drive system. I had a good think about the mech blocker system, which I had showed you in previous videos. I will explore that further, but I actually had a different idea. I'm going to try and explore the idea of a clutch. Now, this has been done before or this has been designed before, I'm sure, but I think my version is slightly different and perhaps a lot simpler than other ones. We've got, first of all, an inner drive ring, which is a concaved disc, essentially. And then we've got the outer drive ring, which again is a convex dish, okay? Bit of a theme running through this hub, isn't there? The way this works is this bit doesn't move, okay? It sits firm in the hub shell, this bit, moves in and out. When it moves in and it engages with this part, then you can pedal forward because the free body unit and the hub shell will essentially be connected. When this moves apart, you can freewheel and you can also freewheel with no friction because there's nothing touching in the free body mechanism. I'll explain it a bit more in detail in a minute, but let me show you it with the elements attached to it. First of all, here is the hub shell. This inner drive ring essentially sits where the toothed ring was previously sitting. The outer drive ring sits where the poles would have been. Now, if I move this out the way and show you the free body unit that I've modeled. Sorry about that. I lost my free body unit, found it again. Okay, this is the free body unit. Previously, this part of the free body unit had the seats for the poles on it. Now, they no, no longer exist. And you've actually got this smaller section here. Now, at the moment, this has nothing on it, but this will have some splines on it, some angled splines, which will essentially work as a very shallow thread. Now, what will happen there is that this drive ring will also have the matching grooves to take these splines. Now, when this free body rotates like this, when you're pedaling, splines in here, the very shallow thread, will force this part to move forward until it meets the inner drive ring, okay? And then when you stop pedaling, this will move back into position. You may be thinking, how will this move back into position? Well, what I'm going to do is, and I haven't actually modeled it yet, but I'm going to work in a spring system just here, okay? Which is constantly trying to force this drive ring away. I've modeled a little groove for the top of the spring to sit in. Now, this is just the beginning of the idea, really. Um, I'm sure there are some glaring errors with it and some things that, you know, just won't work at the moment. But I'm going to carry on, you know, modeling it and seeing what I can come up with. But I'm getting more happy with this design now. So here is the complete model. Let's look at it with some materials on it. There we go. So you can see the different parts. So, yeah, nice. Um, I'll carry on modeling it and then post another video of it later. All right, cheers.